Welcome back. In our last video, we covered the basics of Google Classroom. Now let's dive into some essential settings to help you manage your classrooms efficiently. So the first thing that we wanna go over are the overall notification settings. So to access your overall notification settings, you're gonna go over here to the left-hand side under Classroom, and then you're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom where it says Settings. At the top, we've got the profile, so you can change your profile picture. Scroll down to Guardian Access. So you can enable Guardian Access to all of your Google Classrooms. Right now, I have it turned off. We will cover Guardian Summaries in another video. The main thing are the notification settings. So these are emails that you receive from the Google Classrooms that you are in as a student or Google Classrooms that you teach. So looking at the comments, comments on your posts, comments that mention you, private comments on work, I have all of those turned on because if I'm in a classroom, I wanna know if I'm getting feedback. Now classes that you teach, um, late submission of work, resubmission of work, invite invitations to co-teach, or failed. So I have that one turned off. You can see I have some turned on and some turned off. This will help you stay organized and avoid email overload. Um, and you can always adjust the settings and then change these settings later if needed. So those are the overall settings. Oh, and down here at the bottom, class notifications, you see there's a little shark tooth here. Whenever you see those little shark tooths, you want to click on them because there's always good stuff underneath. So what this is asking me is, are there some classes that you just don't wanna get any notifications for? So in this example, my practice class, I don't wanna get notifications every time I post an assignment in my practice class. The other ones, sure. And actually, I have posted published assignments, I have that turned off, because uh, it was just too much. So. That's what this class notification, you can turn off just one class and then these that are still toggled on, that um, refers back to these settings above. So just, if you notice after you start using Google Classroom, you are getting a bunch of emails, come into your settings and adjust that. All right, let's go back to home. Now let's look at your individual classroom settings. So to access your individual classroom settings, we have to open up each individual class. So I'm gonna start with my practice class here. To go to the settings, you click on the little gear over here on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna click on it to open up the settings. The top part, you've got your class details. So if you ever need to change your class name, this is how you do it. Um, and then you scroll down to the general settings. This is your invitation code. So when you create a Google Classroom, you can have students join your Google Class by typing in this class code right here. So it's pretty small and it's hard to see. So if you would like to display the class code, you can click on that display class code and it pops it up really big. You notice here, it also says copy invite link. So I could copy that and paste it into uh, an email to my, to my students so that they can join that way too. I prefer when they're in the first day of class, we're gonna, I'm gonna show them how to get to Google Classroom and then I'm gonna walk through how they can join the class. You can also make this even bigger by clicking on that full screen option and now it's on there. So you could display this on your display um, in your classroom. Now let's go down to stream and classwork. So stream, if you remember, is that section of the Google Classroom where you just post announcements, okay? Like we don't have PE today. You don't wanna post assignments on the stream. That's not what it's for. Classwork is where you post your assignment. So the stream, there's two things about the stream. Who can post in the stream? And then if you see classwork on the stream. 
So let's look at the first one. The default for this is students can post and comment on the stream. I don't want that, so I have it set to only teachers can post or comment on the stream. With that being said, I love the option of having students post and comment and have a discussion and a community. You just want to make sure that you set your expectations before you turn that on. The next one, classwork on the stream. The default is show condensed notifications. I always set it to hide notifications. So I'm going to show you what it looks like with show condensed notifications on the stream. This is classwork on the stream. So I'm going to click save. It's going to take me to the stream and what this is going to do is it shows every assignment that I ever posted on the stream. And I don't want that. It's, it's ugly. Um, my real posts, my information that I want them to see on the stream is, um, is pushed down. So I'm going to go back to my settings and I'm going to turn that off so that you can see what it looks like. So down here, classwork on the stream, I'm going to say hide, save, and now it's nice and clean. Now I only have what I actually post on the stream, which is click on classwork and let's get going. <laughs> All right, let's go back. There's a couple more. There's some new settings. So this next one, guardian access. We saw that when we did the overall settings on the left-hand side. Um, but if there is one specific class that you want to turn on guardian access, you can. I have it turned off. We will discuss guardian summaries and guardian access in an upcoming video. Next one, manage meet link. I will have to touch base with Dr. Bob, but in the past we have not allowed Google Meet which makes me kind of sad, but um, I'll have to look into that. So that is turned off because we don't do it. We, we are a Zoom school, so we do Zoom. In this next section, we have grading periods. And this is a new feature in Google Classroom and a much requested feature. So right here, I have first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. I'll show you how to add fourth quarter so you just click add grading period you type in however you want to name it and then you've got the start date so I found these dates on the WLS for kids.org our website it's on the left hand side says so calendar so we've got March 14th so you just go up here oops I got to scroll it down a little bit there we go so March 14th, end date of May 29th, um, and then you click OK. So I've got my first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. And what this does is, let me scroll up, is it will automatically set your assignments to that specific grading period based on their due dates. So it is important when we talk about creating an assignment that you do add a due date um, because then it will let you know if it's a first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, or fourth quarter. Um, and then the beauty is you can copy it to other classes so I don't have to type that all in again. And I just click on select the classes where I want it to go. So I'm gonna add it to my slides and drawing class <laughs> and I'm gonna click select. So that is grading periods. Great new addition, very fun. All right, now we get into grading scales, um, this draft for missing assignments. These are all new, but I do have to stop here and explain that Google Classroom does not talk to PowerSchool. So just keep that in mind. So you will be entering all of your grades into PowerSchool. So I'm just gonna quickly go over these, these different options. Um, grading scale, um, proficiency letter or four point scale, or you can create your own. Draft grade for missing assignments. So when a student hasn't turned in their assignment by the due date, 
or you've marked the submission as missing, it will automatically receive a draft grade. So what that means is the student won't see this grade until you return it. So you could turn that off or turn it on. I'm still kind of playing with what that looks like. Um, but like I said, I do no overall grade for my Google Classroom because I don't want the student to, like I just said, I don't want them to think that they're um, getting an A when actually they are not. Now, if you put every assignment that you give in Google Classroom and you grade it, then 100% go ahead and do an overall grade. But if you are just using Google Classroom for a few assignments, then I would do the no overall grade. And you have to tell your students, go to PowerSchool, that is your real grade. So I hope that makes sense. If not, reach out and we'll talk more about it. You could also have grade categories, test 100, homework 10, and then you can add a grade category if you want to. All right, and that's it. We can, you always gotta click save when you mess with classroom settings. All right, and then you wanna go home, open up your other Google Classrooms and um, select the settings. And they, I wish they would give you an option to apply your settings to all your other Google Classrooms because some of you may have seven or eight Google Classrooms. I guess their philosophy, Google's philosophy, is you might have different um, preferences for your different classes. So by taking the time to customize your Google Classroom settings, you will streamline your workflow and stay on top of classroom activities. In our next video, we are going to dive into the classwork section in more detail. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more Google Classroom tips and tricks. And you have a fantastic day.